Okay, it's time to save as a GIF animation. We started with a rough storyboard. We made the assets in an assets file to create all of those frames. And then we brought them over to a stage and we played them through and then we animated on the timeline and I ended up with 45 frames from 30 different layers, playing with the individual timing to get an animation that hits all those points in my storyboard sketch. Oh, that was weird. I did something wrong there. Hmm. Layer 29. What are you doing? Uh, I bet I accidentally moved something. Yes, I changed the frame order. Let's play it through again. So before we can save it as a GIF, we want to make sure we save it as a PSD without any problems because this is at full resolution. It's eight inches tall at 350 pixels per inch and with millions of colors. Yep, so all that looks good. Okay, so good. So this is now saved as my, anim as my assignment five stage file. We're gonna come back to this and use it um, for our refined storyboard. And we're gonna do some weird things. Okay, so now the file is exactly one gig large. So that's too large for an animated file online. So before we save it as a GIF file, we're gonna to go to image size, image, image size, and we're gonna resample and reduce the resolution to 150 which is the best of high definition screens. So if we view it at 100%, it's still larger than the screen. Right. And it will still play through the animation well, and now it's still in millions of colors. Okay, but now we're gonna say file export save for web legacy, which will give us our GIF which is a graphic interchange format, online file options. And this puts into it an animation script. So it basically is just a big stack of 45 layers and it plays through them at a certain timing. But it has to limit each layer to only 256 colors. And you see how it can get kind of grainy but that's kind of the charm of GIFs, especially if you have a lot of gradients in your in colors. But if you play the preview and you like it, that's fine. You can try these different ways of getting the color. Like perceptual is sometimes a little less grainy. The quality, I like bicubic smoother. But all of them, you know, are basically the same. Oh, perceptual does not work well for this. So I'm going to do adaptive. And this is just a preview. Okay. So once you're happy with it, you hit save. You're gonna save it to the desktop with your name, you know, as a GIF file. So this does not replace your PSD. It's a different file format. This is one that can play online. So here it is. Now I'm going to test it by right clicking and I'm gonna open it with a web browser. You can use any web browser, but I'm gonna use Safari because I feel bad for Safari. I never use it for anything. And Safari has a white background instead of a black background when it plays files. Okay, so now you can see a full size. In fact, it's not even full size. This is full size. So you can see that eight inches at 150 is plenty big enough. But I can also shrink it down. <coughs> I can do command minus, shrink it down so I can see the whole thing. And if I were playing a GIF animation in a gallery, like this is a way to do it, right? And it loops through, you know, and it's all good. So if it works there, it's going to work well in PhotoBucket. And I'm just gonna show you how much memory it takes. It's only 58 megabytes, which is big for a PhotoBucket <laughs> image, but not, not ridiculous, right? It's a large GIF. If I wanted to reduce it even more, I'd take it down to a lower resolution, like 100 pixels per inch. And if I had more than 50 frames, I would do that. 
but I only have 45. Okay, now I have the first two components I need to turn in. I have my storyboard sketch. Make sure I save it with my name. Right? I have my GIF. So I'm going to take, bring those into photo bucket into the right folder, which is digital one exercises, assignment five, GIF animation. You're going to put them right into that folder. Remember, all you need is your storyboard sketch to acknowledge the deadline. And then I'm going to go to past, or I'm going to go to instructional examples. That's where I put my stuff. And the only thing we're missing is this last component, which is the refined storyboard. And we get that from our, our PSD file. So I'm going to take both of these and upload them. Because sometimes the GIF can take a while to upload. Right? And now I go back to Photoshop. And I'm remember I reduced my Photoshop file to 150. right? So it's still at 150. I want that. And now what I'm going to do is go up to my very last, or go to my very last frame and click on my very top layer that's turned on. And I'm going to, to use the timeline window options. And I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before. Before I did make uh, frames from layers. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to flatten frames into layers. And that basically makes a flip book out of my animation. So now you see they're not layers anymore, they're frames. And then underneath frame one are my layers. And I'm gonna delete all my layers, drag them down. So now I have 45 layers. Each one is a frame. And if I played it through, it would still play through exactly the same way, right? But what that does, did is it made a, a separate 100% opaque layer for every frame that I had in my timeline. It made a flip book. Now I go to my timeline and I select all of them and I drag them to the trash because I'm not animating anymore. Now I'm making a refined storyboard. So this has been reduced to 150 pixels per inch. So what I do is I now have a stack of 45 images like in a flip book. I know I'm going to use the first image, so I turn that one on. Then I go to image canvas size, and I'm going to grow the space around it. And because mine is 12 inches wide and 8 inches tall, whatever dimension you have for 8 inches, I want you to make that 30 inches for your canvas size. And then whatever your other dimension is, I want you to make that 40 inches. So our standard 30 by 40. I'm going to say OK. right? I'm going to hit Command-0 to fit it all on the screen. And then I'm going to create a new layer behind everything. So new layer, move it behind frame 1. And I'm going to say Edit Fill with White, 100% White. That's our paper. Now I'm going to go back to frame 1. And I'm going to use my rulers, which you can turn on with Command-R. And I'm going to use my Move tool. And I'm going to drag Guides to lock to the sides of that frame. So this is like putting a stack of cards in the middle of the table and then putting little guard rails to really make sure that stack of cards is clean and perfectly stacked. Then I'm going to say view show grid. And you can turn the grid on and off with command um, apostrophe. Now the reason I want this grid is it gives me a perfect inch all around my image. And you can count the squares. So then I'm going to drag guides down to one exact inch. And you can actually set your guides to snap to the grid. So if you go to window, I'm sorry, view, and then snap to, you can also click on snap to grid. Right? And then your guide will snap right to it, right to that one inch mark. Now, if your animation is not even inches, right, 
then you just try to, to keep the same amount of space all the way around it. Then I can turn off my grid, command apostrophe. And then I have guides that give me an even gutter all the way around. Now frame one, I know is gonna go in this upper left-hand corner. So I just drag and drop it. Frame two, now it's just a big stack in the middle. I don't want frame two. That's not enough of a change. I want to introduce the character. So I have to jump up in my deck to where the character is introduced. And before I start zooming. So I want the head fully out. So yeah, frame 18 is gonna be the next one. And you're basically hand choosing your story from your flipbook. So now the character actions. Let's just jump ahead a lot. I don't want the flowers growing quite yet, but I want the camera movement to start. So maybe this one would be a good one. Frame 21. See, we're starting to zoom in. It feels like the character's moving. Okay, then plants start to grow. That's a little extreme. That's a good one. Let's move that there. Then what do I have in the middle? Maybe that one's a good one for the middle. Then what do I have next? I think this one works. And then I can decide, oh, maybe that's a little too slow. So maybe this one should really be like this. That works. Okay, now for the bottom. Already this storm is building, right? But this might be a good one to start the bottom with. And then lightning strikes. I have to find a good frame that kind of shows that. There we go. Big dramatic shift there. And then the flowers are starting to recede, right? And then I just have to show that he's kind of shrinking in fear a little bit. And so this is a good one. So this works for my storyboard. This is what I'm looking for in your refined storyboard. It tells the story. It doesn't need to end the same way it begins, right? That's just your animation. This shows the whole arc. And it has even spacing between them, right? That it's centered, that when we look at it, its actual image size is 30 by 40 by 150. Because if, if we print that, that is really pretty big. That you are able to print a 16 by 20 there at 300 pixels per inch. So that's like a full poster size of your animation. All right, so now I'm going to save that as a new Photoshop file. So this is going to be Carl Assignment 5 Animation Refined Storyboard with all the different layers in Assignment 5. Realize that this is a lower resolution than your actual animation frames. And then I'm going to save it as a JPEG and keep it under five megabytes to the desktop. Let's try quality of eight, quality of seven. There we go. And that is going to be the last thing I submit to PhotoBucket. So it brought in, it had a problem with my GIF, probably because it's over 50 megabytes, just barely. So I'm going to go back to, this is tricky, to go back to here, I, let's see, 